In this video, we're going to start a series of a few videos all about learning. And we're going to focus on specifically habituation, one of the simplest forms of learning. In our next two videos, we'll learn about classical conditioning and operant conditioning. But let's start with just a general definition of what psychologists mean when they talk about learning. Learning is simply a change in an organism's behavior or thought as a result of experience. Let's talk about habituation as an example of learning. Uh, to start, I want to give a little bit of a historical context. Enter the aplysia. The aplysia is a type of sea snail that scientists long ago were trying to study and understand. Using very sophisticated technology, they basically worked on the snail to understand how it works, how it operates, what its behavior is like, and here's an example of that sophisticated technology. They would just poke the aplysia, right? So first of all, they, they poked it and they saw this big response. The aplysia didn't like it. It would shrivel up, it would sort of wiggle around, and you know, it really sort of responded very strongly to this stimulus. So naturally, the scientists poked it again. And they noticed that the aplysia responded a little bit less strongly. They poked it again. The aplysia responded even less strongly, until eventually they did this enough times that they would poke the aplysia and it wouldn't respond at all. It wouldn't really move or uh, react to this stimulus whatsoever. On the basis of these observations, they discovered the form of learning known as habituation. Habituation is simply the process of responding less strongly over time in response to repeated stimuli. I'll give some examples of habituation in your own daily life that you might have experienced, but first I just want to contextualize this because this is a form of learning. Notice, it's a change in behavior as a result of repeated stimuli. Poking the aplysia over and over eventually caused it to behave less strongly over time, changing its behavior. What are some examples in daily life? Well, how about having a snoring partner, a husband or wife, for example, who tends to snore? Many young couples complain about, you know, they just got married and they didn't realize their husbands, for example, snored, and now they're having a lot of trouble sleeping. Eventually, though, they sort of get used to that snoring. And I've even talked with couples who have been married for decades who say that now they even have trouble sleeping with Without their husband because they're so used to hearing the snoring. So again, this is responding less strongly over time, meaning being less annoyed and disrupted and all of that uh, in response to hearing snoring over and over every night. Another example is working at a bustling coffee shop. My wife, for example, can't focus at a coffee shop. There's too much going on. There's little conversations. There's people on a phone call. There's the baristas announcing, you know, whose drinks are ready. She hasn't spent a lot of time studying or working in a coffee shop, and so she really can't get anything done. Me, in contrast, I was like that long ago, but all throughout college and graduate school, I spent a lot of time working at coffee shops. So for me, I don't hear that stuff at all. It's just all white noise, background noise. Again, I'm responsible less strongly over time in response to being in a coffee shop and working in those environments over and over and over again. Now, the opposite of habituation is called sensitization. And this is, again, sort of the opposite. It's the process of responding more strongly over time to repeated stimuli. So why might you get sensitization as opposed to habituation? It really just depends on you and the specific type of stimulus that you're hearing or seeing or whatever over and over again. For me, for example, I get sensitization if I'm studying at the library and somebody starts whispering or chatting on the phone. For me, it gets more and more annoying. It's a quiet environment and I just fixate on what I'm hearing and I just want them to shut up. That's an example of sensitization. So again, as you can see, these forms of learning are very simple, very basic, automatic, very low level. In our next video or two videos, we're going to talk about a few forms of learning that are a little bit more sophisticated. So stay tuned for that.